work quietly and follow along. At any point, click the pause button to catch up or take a break. Hello artists, today I'm going to show you how to draw an animal such as the hippo appear that it is half under the water and we get to see as the viewer um, how this animal lives in the environment both above the water and underneath. And a hippo is a really great animal because it's one of those things where it does it all the time. It's constantly going above or it's always sitting in the water. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna be using a Sharpie marker. You're gonna to wanna to use a pencil just in case you have to erase something and just so you can see my video nice and clear. Here we go. So we're gonna begin with the hippo's head and I like to make the head above like eh, toward the top because that's most of the action and things going on in our picture is going to be in the bottom and underneath the water. So for the head of the hippo, I like to just make an upside down U just like this. Now we're gonna work on the muzzle or kind of the mouth so it's gonna come around you can make it super big and around just like that. I had mine have a little indent in the front that's fine. Now we're going to make the jaw of the hippo which is gonna come underneath just like that kind of like a U as well and I'm gonna add two little teeth because hippos are known for their teeth. In the muzzle or the uh, nose area, I'm going to add two nostrils, which are again, upside down U's, but cutting straight across. Another upside down U, and we're cutting straight across. We're gonna add a little dimension using just line. This is pretty cool. I'm just going to draw a line on the inside. Kinda looks like a candy cane. It hooked and went down. And I'm going to reverse that, hook and down towards the outside. Let's make the snout or the nose, the bone structure of the face of the hippo come down. So from the muzzle, I'm gonna go up and up like this on each side. On either side of that, I can add two eyes, just like so. And you can even add a circle for a pupil in each of those circles. The ears of the hippo go somewhat like this. You can watch first. They kind of go out and then they come back together. Up and out and down together. Pretty cool. Once again, like you do with the nostril, we can use a simple line to show, you know, that form of the animal's body. I did a line just from the head, kind of the inside of the ear at the bottom, um, up and kind of curving around the side of the ear as well. I'll do that on this side, from the bottom and out. Just adds a little bit more to our picture. Now, hippos do have a little bit of hair, so I'm just gonna add a little hair for fun. <laughs> adds character, right? Now we're gonna work on the body of our hippo. And your body can come from wherever you want, it, you know, from the head, whether you want it down here, or you want it coming from the muzzle, or you want it from the head, exactly. That will just show if your hippo has his head really far up, like he's perking up, or if he's really got it submerged down in the water, whatever you want it to look like. There's no wrong way for your head placement is what I'm saying. I'm gonna be doing mine. So it, his body comes kind of off the muzzle area. And for the body, it just kind of comes around like a big circle. They're kind of like a cow, but under the water. So I want you to think really round and big animals. Now we're gonna do the legs, and for the legs, we're gonna do two front legs. I want you to do two rectangles towards the bottom. One and two. These aren't exactly rectangles, remember, because they connect to the body, just like I did here. Okay, let's add some toes to our hippo. For toes, I like to make little upside down U's again. That's a common shape in our hippo, you can probably tell. And I'm gonna go all the way across just like so. One, two, three, four. Your hippo might have three toes, it might have four toes, depending how big you make those. No wrong uh, way to do that. Now I'm gonna add some legs in the back of the hippo because they don't just have two legs. And as an artist, we like to show all the different you know, parts of the animal because in real life we would see it. So I'm gonna make my legs appear that they are farther back. 
Think about artists when we're looking at the world, something that is farther away from us, it's smaller. Something that's closer to us is bigger. So the back legs are farther away. I'm gonna make them little rectangles. They're more like an L coming, um, jetting this way and then up. And same on the other side, in and out. Are you starting to see it? Great. And then we can add some other toes because they're farther away. Perfect. These are just little simple tools as an artist. Just by changing the size of something, we change um, you know, how it looks and it's an amazing simple trick. Okay, our hippo looks like he is just floating in midair, artist. We gotta give him some ground. So I'm gonna draw the bottom. This is gonna be the bottom of the water, like the ground he's sitting on underneath the water. And I'm gonna draw it a little higher. And I'm just gonna draw a straight line across. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna leave a little space underneath there. Remember, the ground is not perfectly straight, so there does your line need to be. But I could have drew the line by the bottom near his toes. That is okay, but he needs more space for his whole body, so we're gonna make it look like he's actually sitting on this ground. Once you have the ground, it's really fun to add in some plant life, different interesting things going on underneath the water. These are things only our hippo friends get to see, but now as the artist, we can make that come to life. I am just adding a little bit of grass, just dragging my pencil up and down. I'm sure hippos kind of eat off the bottom of the water a little bit, kind of eat a variety of things, so I'm just gonna be showing that in my picture. I'm adding some line to show some texture as well. There we go. And I put it towards the outside. It's a good way as an artist to kind of frame your work. When things are more around the outside, it draws the eye of the viewer towards the center and to what's really going on. All right, let's make it look like we're actually under the water and the hippo is partially submerged. So to do that, depends how high you want your water, how deep you want the hippo to be sitting in the water. You can put your water line anywhere. You can have it so just his eyes are poking out and the top of his head or half of his body. Whatever you'd like to do. Hmm, I'm really torn for this one because I feel like it would be so cool to have the line across here, but just his eyes would be showing would be kind of fun too. You can do it however you want. For this one, I'm gonna draw my water line, which is just kind of a wavy line and across. I'm gonna make it go across his chest area underneath the water now that we've established the sky from the water you can have other interesting things going on underneath for example you can add a fish if you'd like to draw a fish here's how you do it you do an upside down kind of arc another upside down arc so it kind of looks like a lemon two pointed ends and a v going off the end of your fish and then i want you to find the center point go out a little bit more place a dot and then real easy you're just going to connect the ends of your fishtail to that point that's how you make a fish we can add an eye and top fins if you'd like or a bottom fin you can even add little kissy lips and other details um, fun things you can put under the water. Remember artists, when we're making a picture, we are making a story, especially when we throw interesting things underneath the water. Um, maybe you can put a treasure chest or yourself swimming along like a scuba diver underneath the hippo. Fun little things like that. Um, I'm gonna add a pair, I think, of sunglasses. Oh gosh, here I go. I'm gonna try to draw sunglasses at the bottom. Now, as an artist, I'm making my viewer question. Oh my gosh, why are there a pair of sunglasses at the bottom? Do they belong to the hippo? Did someone drop them in? I don't know, that's the fun thing about art that we get to create, kind of get to create stories. Maybe my glasses are broken, but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make them look like they're pretty good. There we go, interesting things, hmm. Maybe I could add in trash, and that would talk about kind of pollution. People would wonder, oh, how did the trash get in with the hippo? Is it endangering the hippo? So I want you to add something really creative to your picture, and it can be anything. You don't have to also focus just underneath the water. Remember, we have also the sky going on. Pretty cool. 
Up here, I'm gonna add a little bird sitting on top of our hippo. I'm gonna draw like a little head, and I'm gonna start with a wing, the body, I need a beak, and the little legs. There we go. Your bird can be any type of bird. You can put anything up there, maybe. I'm gonna put a sun hat on the you know, hippo. See how I'm having so much fun with this and really making it my own? I'm gonna be making a cloud. Maybe it's storming and the hippo is a little frightened. It could be raining. Super fun things you can add to this picture. That's how you draw a hippo underwater and as an artist, we get to kind of build a story about what's going on above with this character and below that his toes are only feeling. It's pretty cool to be able to see something going on in two different spaces at once. And as an artist, we can do that. Couple last things, we want to really show that this is water, so we need to give it a little bit of texture. I just like to add some wavy lines kind of going across. That's okay that it goes across your hippo. See how it just made it appear like the water's in front of the hippo? That's what we're kind of going for. You can also add in bubbles. If your hippo's nose is under the water, remember they have to breathe and you might want to add some bubbles. There we go. Alrighty, artists. Thanks for watching.